In this video we're going to talk about the basic anatomy of the female reproductive system. This video is designed to aid us in developing the foundation required to understand menstruation and the hormone systems involved. Before we start talking about that, we can uh, identify the internal genitalia that can be broken down into the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries, each which have their individual subsections. So we can see the uterus here. We have the fallopian tubes which extend down to the ovaries here. You'll notice a space between the fallopian tube and the ovary. Um, and then we have the ovaries, which are uh, found bilaterally uh, beneath the fallopian tubes. Each can be broken down into their own individual elements. So if we take a look at the fallopian tubes, we can actually break them down into the infundibulum, which are the arm-like projections, which are going to be at the end of the uh, fallopian tube, and they uh, will help uh, pick up or basically sweep the ovum into the fallopian tubes. We have the isthmus, which is uh, the middle part, and then we have the ampulla, uh, which is the end part of the fallopian tube, which enters into the uterus. We also break the uterus down into its own individual uh, subsections. And in the uh, uterus, we have the fundus, which is the top of the uterus. This is where we massage if uh, the fundus is boggy or there's some postpartum hemorrhage. We can also uh, break it down into the cervical canal, um, which is uh, the canal that's kind of leading into the uh, gross body of the uterus where we would have uh, development of the fetus. We have the internal os, which is leading into uh, the cervix, and then we have the external os, which is leading towards the vagina. And these have important aspects when we start talking about changes in pregnancy. As we break down the uterus, we should actually talk about the histiology as well. So when we're looking at the uterus, we have three layers of cell that are going to make up the components of the uterus. That first lining of cells is going to be the endometrium, it's the innermost layer of the uterus. And this is going to be the functional layer of tissue that supports uh, zygote implantation and growth of a fetus. The middle layer of uh, muscle tissue is the myocardium, and this is going to play a large role in muscle contraction, which is going to allow for uh, birthing of the fetus. Finally, we have the parametrium, which is the outermost layer of the endometrium. So those are the three layers. Importantly, the endometrium can actually be broken down into two additional layers. We have the striatum functionalis, which is a layer of tissue that is recycled and regrows. So this tissue actually sloughs off during menstruation. This is what, what uh, causes menstruation and the bleeding that occurs with menstruation. And then we have the striatum basalis, which is the innermost layer of the endometrium, which remains constant. It is not sloughed off and it uh, continues to reside within the endometrium during menstruation. So striatum functionalis actually uh, is removed and regrows during menstruation. In order to support this, we have some arteries that are going to supply blood to the uterus. The main artery is the uterine artery, which is actually going to branch into some straight and spiral arteries. So the, the arteries remain straight through the parametrium and the myometrium into the striatum basalis, but these arteries actually spiral out into the striatum functionalis. This spiral structure allows support for the sloughing of the tissue, so this will actually help with the shedding of that tissue during menstruation, and those spiral arteries actually will become engorged with blood or will widen during pregnancy in order to um, support growth of the uh, to support growth of the striatum functionalis. Just as we broke down the different areas of the uterus, we can do the same with our ovary. So our ovary is broken into a number of different sections. We have the ovarian cortex, which lives in the outer area here, and this is gonna be our primary site for follicle development. This is where the ovum actually develops and then is released from. The inner layer is the ovarian medulla, and this is where our veins, arteries, and nerves are gonna live. So it's here where we get the blood supply going in and the nervous tissues going into the ovarian cortex. If we direct our attention back to the ovarian co cortex, we can see follicles in various stages of development entering. The first is our primordial follicle, followed by our primary and secondary follicles, and then our mature follicle. This is the follicle that'll actually have some lysis occurring to it and will release the ovum during the menstrual cycle. Following release of the ovum, this will turn into the corpus luteum, followed by the corpus albaceans. So again, to kind of recap, we have our primordial fo follicles, which are the follicles that are going to be innate or the ones that the female is born with. They'll develop through hormonal control from follicle-stimulating hormone into primary and secondary follicles, followed by a mature follicle. Generally, we will only have one mature follicle within the ovary at one time, and this is the follicle that's going to release its egg during menstruation. 
Following the release of the egg, the mature follicle will turn into the corpus luteum, which will maintain some hormonal control to prevent shedding of the endometrium during uh, the fertilization period. If no fertilization occurs, then the corpus albaceans is going to form, and this will signal the body that no fertilization has occurred and that the endometrium should now be sloughed off and menstruation will occur all over again.